All right, so I get this question a lot. How did I get to where I am? How did I get famous on social media? Um, and how am I successful? You know, how do I have the things that I have? You know, the homes, the cars, the clothes. Everybody wants to know how you get there. I got a, I got a comment the other day, right? Because it was a video, a lot of people asked that question. And the comment was like, um, he's not going to tell you the truth. He's just going to tell you something stupid, like be passionate about what you're doing, chase your dreams, something like that. And so that made me think about how many people give that advice, right? They're like, be passionate about what you're doing, chase your dreams. That is a, that is anybody who's successful will probably tell you that. They'll probably tell you, you know, you gotta, you gotta be passionate about what you do. You gotta go and find what you were meant to do. Like, what is it that you are a hundred percent meant to do and, and get after it? And that's kind of hard to figure out, especially when you're younger. It's kind of hard to figure out exactly what you're supposed to do. And you really have to self-reflect and, and figure that information out. But I kind of want to give a, like a story behind me doing exactly that. So that guy, I guess he wanted a cheat code. He wanted like, you know, put your money in this and you'll be rich. And, um, you know, maybe somebody's got that answer, but the, the truth is it, it's hard work. It's really self-reflecting and figure out what you're meant to do. And it is chasing your dreams. And it is being passionate about what you're doing. Because if you're not passionate about it, you're not going to, um, you're just not going to stick with it, man. Because everything that you have to do to be successful takes consistency. And in order to be consistent, in order to get up every morning, grinding, um, you know, nonstop, thinking about it at night. You kind of have to be passionate about it, man. And so I'll start with my story and how I got to where I am. And I'm really lucky because I've always had nice things. Not because my parents gave it to me. None of that. But I, my, my grandmother lived a very luxurious kind of life or whatever. So I got to experience having nice things as a kid. So as soon as I got out of high school and I got my first job, I kind of desired things. So I was like. I wanted to have the best and I never had the best, but I worked hard to com to compete, right? Which is a stupid thing to do, but I worked hard to have the nice things that other people had around me. Like I wanted to have the nicer stuff. I wanted to have the nicer clothes. I wanted to have the lifted up truck, the four wheelers, et cetera, et cetera. So it started with me. Um, let's start with finding yourself, right? You're not. Maybe if you just mature faster than others, this starts to happen about when you graduate high school. I remember the day I graduated high school. So I lived in this guest house when I was in about my junior year to senior year in high school. My grandmother had a little like guest house over her garage or whatever. So I lived in there. I had like a really cool last couple of years experience in high school. My grandmother bought me a Jeep Wrangler. She bought me a couple cars. Like when I tell you I was kind of spoiled as a kid, but... This had nothing to do with my success. My story went downhill immediately after this, right? Um, so I got to experience something. I got to experience having nice things. That was that was the only thing benefit I had out of having a, a luxurious life in high school, right? I didn't have to worry about anything in high school. I really didn't. And you don't either. I mean, as long as you have a roof over your head and food, a way to get to school, you don't have anything to worry about in high school. But at the time, everything seemed so large, right? Every issue in high school seems bigger than the world. And it, do it doesn't even matter. Um, I have about one friend I went to high school with. Literally one. That is it. One friend I went to high school with that I know today. And I'm sorry if you just have, you know, the if you're in high school and you have just these people you love right now and they're, they're the most important people in the world. I'm sorry if that's discouraging, but I have one person that I know from high school that I still talk to you on a on a yearly basis um so anyway back to the point finding yourself it had happened after graduation for me um everything was large after i graduated high school the day i graduated uh, my grandmother we were outside and she was so proud my grandmother my great grandmother died i think the same day she never thought we were going to graduate high school so she kind of like held on that long and then she was gone but I remember 
the day I graduated, you know, everybody's like, do you want to go out? Do you want to go party with your friends? Blah, 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 blah. And it was like reality. It just hit me and I didn't know what to do. And I know my grandmother remembers this day. Um, but I was just, dude, I, I went upstairs and I was like, yeah, I, I never, I never cried, but I like shed a tear because I didn't, I didn't know what I was going to do. Like I didn't apply for colleges in school. Um, like most families do, like I wasn't brought up to be educated, let's say, like, like I didn't have this history of like my family being like, you need to, um, get good grades. You need to do this. Like, it just wasn't like that, right? Like it wasn't hard on me. Like I got C's and I made it through and that was it. Like I wasn't, I was popular in, in high school, but I wasn't smart. And, um, so if I could tell you anything in your school right now, it's study, you know, be smart, get in school. Hold on to education as long as you can until you figure out what you're going to do. Because having a degree is not a bad thing to have and being smart is not a bad thing to be. So hold on to education as long as you can. Um, focus on that. Being cool in high school doesn't matter. Like I said, I have no friends from it. Um, so finding yourself, right? And hopefully you leave high school with edu being smart and applying to school and all this stuff, but... Um, I didn't start to figure out who I was until, um, like after graduating and going to work in the greenhouses, that was my first job. Um, my grandmother gave me a 2003 Ford Explorer and I sold it while I was working in the greenhouses. Um, and I made $3,000 from it. I had to give her a thousand of it. And this is kind of when I started to figure out what I really like to do. I always liked four wheelers when I was a kid. I always liked trucks. I always wanted lifted trucks, blah, 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 etc. And so I sold that and I went and bought another car and I sold that and I got into this habit of flipping vehicles and trying to make a little bit of money there. I wasn't making enough to really like, um, like provide for a family or anything like that. But my grandmother gave me didn't give me a house but she let me rent a house from her um and it was like five hundred dollars a month back then you could rent a house for like five hundred dollars a month it was a lot cheaper and so this is like 2012 and um anyway to make a long story short i got into the habit of flipping four wheelers i started getting really nice four wheelers um and selling them but again it still was like really enough to like pay the bills and have a truck so after the um the job where I was uh, in the greenhouses, I started selling cars because I figured out what I was passionate about. And so it was easy for me to get up and go sell cars. And you can make a decent amount of money selling cars. If you're like coming out of school and you have like sales abilities and you're good at talking to people, go try and sell cars. You'll make, you'll make a good living and you'll start to have the kind of money that you see the older kids have or people around you have, whatever. So that's what I did. Um, again, it wasn't a crazy amount of money. It was enough to pay the bills. It was enough to keep me having a nice car, enough to keep me having a four wheeler where I could sell. At this point, I'm like probably 19, 20 years old. And so I have a roof over my head. I have a truck I like. Um, this is about the time of me building like my dream truck. It's like a 7.3 turbo diesel, big orange one. I know a lot of people out there are going to remember that truck. And, um, I started making real friends because like I said, the ones in high school just, they were gone as soon as I left. They were in college and I'm stupid. And so um, I started partying with my friends in a barn, a lot of moonshine, a lot of making good friends. Um, and I had a great time and I still have some of those friends till this day. But in that moment, you fall into this rut of like trying to be like the people you're around, right? You're like, oh, I have friends. Let me, let me try and be like them. Let me try and fit in. And, and that's the worst, that's the most toxic thing about having like a great group of friends. It's like you kind of, you you don't find your own character. You don't try to be an individual, right? You just want to fit in and be like friends. And so you definitely want to figure out who you are. And and for me, I joined the military at, up until that point, right? Because I wanted more. And that's like the first time I ever had to leave home. I was in done and been to North Carolina like my entire life. I did a little bit of traveling, but that was like my first time leaving home, my first time moving. 
So I joined at like I joined at 21 years old, um, like literally the day I turned 21. I I joined the military, and so I joined the military. I deployed, learned a lot about myself. I was an individual. I was by myself, and um, still trying to be like other people. Still didn't know what I really wanted to do, and I that's when I went to Korea. Whenever I got stationed in Korea is when I was like by myself and really learned how to, um, you know, hop into my own personal role and become the fashion guy, right? Like even in Korea where there's no cowboys, I was like still doing my cowboy fashion. I was still wearing the cowboy hats. I was still what I was growing up, even though it was like, you look crazy. You look weird. Why are you wearing a cowboy hat in this place? And I got to the point where I was like, I didn't care. And I was happy with what I was. And I was happy with how I felt. And I was happy practicing roping with my custom roping dummy that I made. And that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be in cowboy fashion. I wanted to be a cowboy. And so whenever I got back home, I just kind of started roping a lot more. I started um, riding a lot more. And um, that's when, obviously, the fashion thing took over for me. Through the military, it moved me to Fort Campbell, Kentucky, which is where I found Nashville. And so when I moved to Nashville, I started styling. And um, basically, if you're trying to figure out where the point of the story is so far, it's that I was passionate about something from the day I got out of high school. The, the day I got out of high school is when I started becoming passionate about the things that I was doing to make money, right? So I started with four wheelers. Like if you, uh, I'll insert a picture of my my last four wheeler. The one, like it was a pro, it was a progression, right? Like I started with little four wheelers. I got to the big stuff. It's all about progression to get to where you want to be. And the only way to get to that point is by being passionate about what you're doing. And that's the only way you're going to be able to keep grinding and keep being motivated to do it. I loved four wheelers. I kept grinding, I kept flipping till the point where I got to the one I just showed you. And so then with styling and like with fashion and, and being inspired by it, it was like, I love doing this. I'm going to just keep doing it. There was no money in it at first, right? Like I was just doing it. And then when I found Nashville, I started styling with artists. I was like, okay, this is dope. I was passionate about that. I kept grinding with that. I was making money that way. Kind of got tired of living in people's shadows. And so I made a TikTok video one day. I didn't want to be the shadow of certain artists, blah, blah, blah. So I made the TikTok video. That blew up. Again, I was excited about it. I was passionate about it. I was excited about showing the, showcasing the fashion for the world and the people out there. And that was enough motivator for me to keep doing it to the point where it progressed. It's all about progression. It's all about grinding. It's all about staying the course and being passionate about what you're doing. And I... I know that guy was like, that's what he's going to say. He's going to say some shit doesn't really help. And I hope this helps. I hope that is a motivator for you to look within yourself, try and figure out what it is that you really want to do. If you want to want, if you really want to be a realtor, if you enjoy selling houses, if you enjoy selling candy bars, if you enjoy selling sneakers, grind. All you got to do is just do it, man, and don't stop. I promise it will lead somewhere. There's no door that closes on any business, right? There's somebody that makes it successful. There's all kinds of people who are successful doing weird things. Like there was a guy who woke up and was like, I want to make latex gloves and made probably a million billion dollar business out of it. I mean, as long as you grind, the door doesn't close and you will be successful to the amount that you want to be successful. Like to the extent that you want to be successful, you can totally do it if you find what you're passionate about and you don't stop. And so that's what happened, man. I got to the point where this, what I'm doing now was enough of a motivator for me to keep going no matter what. It sucked, there was up and downs. I left the military four or five months ago um, and I didn't know what I was doing. Right. Like I, I got out after eight years of serving and I did not know what I was going to do. But I knew that once once I was in this fashion thing, I've been doing the fashion thing for a year. So I was still doing it when I was in um, the army. But I just knew when that door closed.
that I was going to keep grinding on the fashion thing and I was going to be successful doing that. Um, and that is truly the advice I have on how you get to where I'm at. Anybody can do it. You can do it doing anything. You just have to, you just have to, you just have to keep grinding, man. Find what you love. Keep grinding at it. I promise it'll work. All right, I didn't want to make this the longest conversation in the world, but I did want to stress the importance of finding what you're passionate about and grinding at that in order to be successful because there is no cheat code, man. Um, nobody can lay out the steps for you to be successful. It's all a different story. Every person is different. Every single person lives a completely different life. Nobody's life is the same. And so the steps are completely different. It's all about being passionate, being at the right place in the right time. So those opportunities can keep presenting themselves to you. And they're not, they're not going to just, they're not just going to knock on your door. You have to be in the right place at the right time. You have to keep grinding. You have to keep chasing them. That's how you be successful. And that's how you get where I am. And yeah, I mean, that guy's right. Like I can't give you a, a secret. That is the secret. The secret is being passionate about what you're doing and it is grinding. I know I said the word passionate a million times in this video, but I hope this kind of answers some of your questions and kind of gave you a little bit of my backstory. I will do a more laid out version of this video and kind of like step by step and what I did and it might give you a little bit more context, but uh, I hope it answers some of your questions. Please like and subscribe and y'all keep cowboying on.